Cool. All right. Um, so let's get started uh, since more people already uh, let people trickle in um, and then we can uh, we can continue um, in the interest of time. All right, I'll play uh, this uh, knowledge from countries um, for ANZ and then we'll uh, get started um, with the content. We would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we live and work throughout Australia, as well as the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people viewing this event today. We pay our respects to elders, both past, present and emerging, and recognise and celebrate their continuing connection to land, waters and community. Our reverence also extends to all First Nation and Indigenous peoples as well as their ancestral lands. All right, uh, for New Zealand, uh, we acknowledge the Tangata Whenua, the Indigenous people of Aotearoa of New Zealand and their enduring connection to the land, waterways and culture. We pay our respects to their ancestors, their current leaders, their future generations. We recognize the rich heritage of the Maori people and honor the importance of their language, traditions and customs in shaping the identity of this country. OK, um, welcome everyone to the Semantic Kernel Public Office Hours uh, for the APAC and ANZ. I'm glad to see familiar faces as well as, um, I guess, new um, people uh, that are joining the call. Um, so great to, great to see everyone here. Um, so just to uh, quickly recap, uh, we're in the six, I think, um, of office hours. Uh, so we run the office hours every fortnight, every two weeks. Um, and uh, also we want to make it um, uh, irrelevant as well for everyone, given that number of updates usually coming from the, uh, the project team. Um, and the idea is that having this um, APEC ends that this is more of a prediction practitioner sort of uh, point of view um, where, you know, uh, everyone can share their experience building with Semantic Kernel um, and obviously demos um, and showcasing whatever you've got. Um, always welcome. So anything that you um, you want to show, uh, please uh, reach out. You can also uh, join uh, the Discord as well uh, where you can get the um, basically the latest updates and discussions and questions as well as if you want to um, submit your uh, talk for next uh, Semantic Kernel community um, office hours, uh, more than welcome uh, to join. Um, and just want to remind everyone, this is a public uh, office hours, so this will be recorded and will be uh, shared. Um, so in our uh, aka.ms, so that link um, in there, um, as you can see, um, and hopefully um, everyone has access to that. It's a public uh, YouTube uh, recording. Uh, we also have a number of demos um, as well um, that uh, is uh, shared in a different URL. Um, so this one uh, more around uh, kind of projects related. So any demos uh, that you uh, that you showcased. So that URL is is there. Um, this is uh, kind of uh, just showcase the kind of the three projects uh, within uh, within the APAC and ANZ uh, community. So thanks everyone to for sharing their projects um, and uh, looking forward to uh, hearing more from everyone to uh, to share and showcase um, their their cool projects they're working on. Yeah, so uh, feel free um, again uh, to just uh, either fill in the form or uh, uh, submit it on or mention that on Discord um, and we can uh, get to it and make sure that you have a space or slot uh, for uh, the next demo. Right, so the usual kind of uh, rhythm uh, of business, if you will, um, we run uh, a number of uh, basically quick updates for you all um, to basically share what's the, what's the latest since our office hours. Um, again, this this thing um, actually changes every single week, um, if not every single day. Um, if you see the number of PRs that are um, made in the uh, Smart Kernel repo, uh, you can see that this quite active. Um, we currently zooming into version one, um, so that will be targeted hopefully around December. Um, 
around mid-December uh, before uh, the winter break, uh, US said, uh, or some break in our side. Um, and that's that's basically the idea is that we uh, want to get um, a lot of the changes uh, baked in uh, into uh, version one. And this time around, uh, there's a number of huge updates uh, recently with um, Ignite. Uh, so hopefully some of you watch Ignite. Um, there's uh, a bunch of updates related to Matic and all as well as kind of um, AI offerings that we have within, uh, within Microsoft as well. Cool. Um, so I'll sh move on to the next slide. Um, there's highlighting a number of uh, videos here um, that um, just recently dropped. Uh, templated assistance uh, with OpenAI and SK. Uh, that's a bit of a topic that I'd like to sort of touch a little bit um, later on. Um, and, uh, you know, with the recent sort of announcement from uh, Dev Day um, with, with OpenAI, um, there's a number of, um, uh, I guess, questions around how and, and uh, semantic kernel kind of play um, and, and uh, as a result of that assistance API, and we can, we can have discussions on that. Um, and uh, Matthew just released uh, a video around, you know, the kind of a, a quick demo on uh, how SK plays uh, a role and how it can abstract that overall, um, you know, assistance um, uh, APIs uh, using semantic kernel. Um, we'll we'll touch base on that. I know that a lot of people, I guess, have uh, some questions, or maybe we can we can have uh, discussions on that. Um, the next video uh, is Java. Uh, so for those of you who are uh, familiar with Java, um, anyone um, expert in Java or using Java here, um, uh, it would be good to get you uh, to share that um, if anyone wants to, to quickly unmute. If not, we can. Um, we can move on to the next one, or we can we can leave it to Q and A. Um, the other one was uh, bridge management with uh, NL SQL. Um, there's also a, a blog post for that as well. Um, that um, our guests, uh, this guest blog post um, that anyone actually here can can write as well. So if anyone wants to um, write, a, not only just a you know a video, um, you can also write a, a blog post in the uh, Dev Blocks um, as well, which I'll show shortly. Right, so the blog posts are available there, um, so you can you can actually contribute um, as well. Um, again, reach out, um, and that will be able to uh, point you uh, in the in the right direction uh, if you want to write a, a blog post. Um, and uh, this four uh, blog posts just recently uh, dropped, um, and that's all uh, related to the Ignite um, as well, um, as well as follow up to the systems uh, discussion. All right, first of all, um, let's zoom in to um, uh, kind of the assistance. Um, uh, we can talk about uh, the assistance one. I'll probably better to just give you um, the actual um, uh, the actual uh, blog post. Um, but yeah, the idea there is that um, th there's this um, there's basically uh, a new assistant API that just released uh, by OpenAI, um, and that um, made it easy uh, for you to uh, build um, uh, basically um, sort of a context and chat history, uh, and be able for you to uh, retrieve information uh, from uh, from context without you uh, doing a lot of the hard work and then the plumbing for it, um, including uh, uh, things like uh, using vector uh, database. Um, so what um, Semantic Kernel um, started to sort of uh, move towards uh, or kind of um, be able to tailor uh, its its functionality, given the, the planner functionality that uh, built in within Semantic Kernel, um, is to have uh, additional uh, assistant functionality where you can um, leverage assistance um, in a more um, easy uh, manner. Um, so and we also have plugins as well um and and the blog posts actually really highlight a very interesting um uh, approach let me just share that with you now uh, cool
Cool. If we just can see it. Um, so basically, um, there's a different sort of pattern, uh, if you will. Um, one of them is a dynamic rag. Um, so there's a number of um, advantages and disadvantages of this uh, approach um, in that, um, uh, I guess, around around this approach is that it's a it's a it's a, a sequential uh, sort of approach where you um, use function calling um, to, uh, to to perform uh, a rag. So this is a functionality where you actually need to retrieve some data and then um, generate some messages. Um, and this uh, idea of this uh, dynamic rag is that um, you you make a call, um, basically multiple calls uh, to the LLM uh, in order for you to get um, uh, the right, um, uh, I guess, the right um, messages or the right output. Um, and the uh, semantic kernel and how uh, we can uh, basically help with this um, is using what we call a templated rag. Um, so basically, uh, with this templated approach, uh, they, uh, we can instantly, instantly call the API without waiting for OpenAI to tell us what, uh, what to do. Uh, so the system can then uh, kind of uh, combine um, uh, some of these um, information to instantly create messages and have better context for the next uh, required function. So assembling the um, uh, the the prompt uh, for us to to send to um, LLM. So that doesn't have to be up here, but yeah. So this really um, interesting uh, demo on on what it is. Um, but um, I just recently upgraded my my machine, so I haven't uh, been able to configure it. Um, but I'll show you the um, kind of the the code and what's the um, uh, what's the uh, kind of the, the different approaches in there. But you can actually see the video in there, so it's probably a little bit more um, easier for you to just uh, have a look at the video and then um, uh, you know use the templated prompts um, with with assistance. Um, the thing I've got to. I was going to say something yeah. like that. Like, I, I probably unfairly simplify that too. Like, you know, we, I, I found it when, when I started playing with Chat Copilot, like, as soon as I put, like, if I, if I went and put some, like, information in the system prompt, like, it, it, would, it was then all of a sudden able to answer, <laughs> like, on, um, it was able to answer and, and kind of apply that to, to kind of all the knowledge. Like, so if I guess just gave it a little bit of a blurb. And this kind of feels like that. It's like so because they're best using the template and they're kind of injecting into um, yeah you know, into the prompt with the with the handlebar, so it it can just straight away answer without having to actually go and do the function call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty um, uh, uh, pretty cool that that it, that does it uh, by um, uh, by using templated handlebar um, to 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 do it. Um, it's it's really uh, good to uh, actually demo it. Uh, I wish I could I could do that. Um, does anyone um, manage to actually run that, or maybe um, have a working um, uh, demo that um, Matt uh, Matt showed in the in the showcase in his in his video? I'll just share uh, quickly the the code base. Um, and then we can uh, sort of talk about that as well. Um, so this is part of the um, SK proposal. So let me just uh, zoom that in. Um, so it is uh, the idea is that we're going to be um, looking um, at um, adding this functionality, potentially not part of V1. It's probably going to be in um, uh, shortly after V1. Um, I think it's going to be um, added as a, a NuGet uh, sort of package. Um, at the moment, that's the discussion anyway. Um, and uh, what it is, uh, it allows you to um, add different assistants. And this uh, number of assistants uh, effectively work together um, to get um, uh, you the right output um, for that. Um, so again, um, probably the easiest way is to just show um, 
open up the right folder in here. Um, so under here, uh, number of systems here, um, there's uh, a number of instructions um, that you can uh, you can see. So it's designer, mathematician, and project manager and researcher. Um, and the idea is that um, you use what we call hierarchical chat, where um, you have a, a project manager uh, that handles the kind of the requests, um, and then it it then um, delegates um, the responsibility um, to a different agent or different assistant um, that will um, perform certain functionality depending on the plugins plugins that are um, being exposed to you. Right? So for example, we have mathematician um, um, agent where um, it's basically like a, a job description on on what you know this particular assistant can do. Um, you know, a system that answers math problems, um, and you know the uh, this this number of template in here. This this is the templated um, that handlebar that we, we mentioned. Um, so you are a mathematician. Uh, no need to ask. To, uh, no need to show your work. Just give the answer to the math problem, um, and the answer to the math problem is that. So basically, using this um, templated thing. Um, functionality within that. Um, same thing with uh, project manager. Um, so you have, um, you know, basically this, this, that uh, hierarchical chat. So basically any Have we lost Vic? Oh, so no, Lemmy, it's not you. I think we might have lost Vic. Vic is, um, yeah, John, we have lost him. Lemmy, any chance you want to take over? I have. Uh, um, I was busy answering, looking for some code and answering a question in the chat, so I wasn't paying attention to where Vic was. I will give Vic a minute to to dial back in. Um, um, meanwhile, um, we were there was a conversation. Well, maybe we'll just quickly jump to a question that was uh, that was in the uh, chat, which I think was a really good one, um, talking about the use of kernel memory. Oh, Vic's gone, right? Um, the use of kernel memory for storing um, chat context between executions of a planner, right? Um, and digging out some code. I don't know if. Um, Mohammed, I don't know if you'd seen the chat copilot example. That is probably the best example of that being implemented. Um, if you haven't seen that sample repo, I'll you're post a Oh, you're about to? So you're yeah, if you haven't, you're about to. Simon is gonna do that. And um, I'll dig out the specific code. I think it is the chat memory controller is where that would be implemented. Um, yep. but yeah, maybe maybe Lemmy, you can even even uh, dig through the code, but I'll check a link in there. Mind you, where should we just whilst uh, actually we'll assume Vic is going to come back in any, any minute. Um, yeah. Shall we jump over to you, Simon? We'll just do your demo while we wait. Sure, man. So of course, I lost my whole integration environment about two hours before this meeting. So we switched over to a different environment, which is going to be a little less exciting, but I'll share my screen. Right, let me know when you can see it. All good. Something's happening. Yeah, there we go. Mate, go for it. All righty. Um, okay, so this was going to be about, um, let, let me just level set first. So I've been playing a lot with the Czech Copilot, doing a lot of like RAG implementations, and and um, yeah, you start off playing around with the, the, the things that are in Czech Copilot, which are 
allowing you to go and pull in PDFs and text documents, uh, Word documents, anything that has kind of semantic meaning in within the content of the, the documents itself. So that, that's great. But then I, I guess the, the question kind of came up about, well, and, and there's been a whole lot of work on um, more kind of structured data. So um, in, inside the, the kernel memory uh, repo, there's a whole lot of stuff uh, around NL to SQL, so natural language to SQL. Um, and I guess the, the kind of pitfalls and the, the complexities around that. But then the, I, I kind of feel there's this other uh, type of data source in the middle, and that's that's kind of like things like my, my JSON documents or Excel spreadsheets or CSV. So stuff where well, maybe maybe let's call it semi-structured, right? So it's as in it's it does it's maybe it's tabular. It's got it's got a structure, and you can you can query it. But there might be there'll be many the many instances of that document. So it's like it's like having kind of NLS SQL with you know 15 different databases. So, so I started playing around with, well, how can I do that? And because the NL SQL stuff was with a, also kind of works a lot better if you have a if you have a schema. I kind of thought, well, how how can we use RAG um, to kind of help out with that? And there's a whole of people kind of using using like embeddings and and um and your and RAG to to kind of maybe go and put the schema in there. So when you so you can actually search against that. And um, and then it will go and uh, yeah, and you, we'll be able to pull out all the the relationships and and it could from there it can actually um, construct a much better query. So, um, so first of all, this is um, this is uh, this is the the the, co uh, the actual Copilot repo. I've, I've obviously forked it, and um, I don't know if, if any is anyone actually running the full build pipelines. At all, or just reusing the PowerShell scripts. Yeah, nice. So that, that was a, that was pretty interesting when you first started that because it's got it's got a lot of um, it's using a lot of variables and stuff like environment variables and and system variables. So I actually I've actually got pretty much I've, I've saved every script from from doing all this. So if you uh, if you do want to play with that and you, you want to uh, you want some easier ways to kind of get it a lot rather than just going in manually and adding all the uh, all the variables. I call I can sh definitely share that. Um, now, uh, so if we go and look at the go and look at the deploy pipeline, there's going to be a lot of X's in here, but uh, so uh, well up up until. Up until maybe maybe three weeks ago, it wouldn't actually go through the full thing because it didn't have these these dependencies on the on the uh, initial build steps. But I but I got into the uh, I got into the chat copilot um, repo. I got a commit in there, got a pull request accepted to fix that big time. Um, but basically, and this is actually the the build part is a hell of a lot easier now than they than they originally were. Um, because the as you as you may or may not know if you're playing with the chat copilot it, it used to use a like a, a static web app to do to actually host the the, the front end um, react um, app so that's all kind of gone now and it's it's actually a hell of a lot easier because the especially this is a, there's a web api here which is the actual back end um dot net um api and then and then actually when the, when the build occurs, it actually puts goes and stuffs that um that production build inside the um the web web API and actually serves it from there. So you got a couple other the actual memory pipeline. There's not much to that and the and the plugins, but the, it runs all the ARM there, and um and then it will actually go and deploy the it will go and deploy that 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 backend API with which has the the front end web app in it and those and those other two. Uh, yeah, the, the memory pipeline and the and the plugins. But then there's some um, <laughs> very very light integration testing. It's probably generous to call it integration testing. It basically checks if the uh, if it's up, and um, yeah, which then gives you an opportunity to like throw an approval or something on that, or you know, approval on that, so you, you so you can keep keep deploying 
continuously to the integration environment and you know just let it through to, to production when uh when you're good to go so yeah it's um i i, I did once I, I split it off originally into in into infrastructure and and um the app layer because I, I was getting so annoyed at like blatting all my um my configuration but that's not really it doesn't really need to be split up for that you can you know you can, you can it's basically this thing. It it, got, it basically runs the entire um uh, the the entire advice at every time, and we'll just take everything out. But you could you could go and tweak that. So, so so that's the um yeah. So I'll just really quickly if you are if you do do want to go and play with this, and you and you actually go you you go fork the repo, and you want to um spin those those um those uh, GitHub actions workflows up. The thing that you're going to need is is in here. So there's um, there's a couple of environments in there. They're originally called int and prod, I think, and the in uh, up in the actual repo. I changed it because maybe I'm in, I, mean, I feel like a New Zealander. I don't like shortening words. Um, and so and in the inside here is a whole lot of um in you know, different different environment variables. So some of them are kind of um, Hanging on from when they originally did it, so some of the stuff's kind of is a little bit repeated and redundant. But but yeah, but you actually need all these variables. So yeah, um, either put them in yourself, or or I'll just share the um, I'll share the script so you can just make that happen really really quickly. Um, and there's a I think it's another uh, it's an actual like uh, repo level variable or three of them as well, but. That's enough uh, with, with the DevOps, but that's um, it's uh, yeah. Once once I once I had that up and running, it was just so much easier. Like, yeah, I suppose it is really easy when you first just run those PowerShell scripts, but then after that, when you're just changing stuff all the time, and especially when you're when I'm when I'm going and pulling down from the fork and refreshing refreshing mine, it, it, to actually have a, a a proper kind of development process where I'm you know going to another branch, an up, like an update branch and and then pulling the stuff down and then going up and pull request. It's uh even though it's only me on the team, it's uh it just it just feels a whole lot safer safer and yeah, there's a kind of common strategies to it to back yourself out of it. All right, so this is my so this is um so as I said, it's called faux pilot. Um and there's there's uh that's the integration and the production environment. This this test dot dev and and dot dev. I did have to stuff around a little bit with the uh, if you want to put um if you want to go and throw DNS uh, domain names on it like uh, there's a depending on how, how your domain name is if you're um uh, yeah whether you're you know, got you know, like um multiple like subdomain levels or whatever or you just you yeah you know, you're just using a C name. It's it's a little bit might be a little bit tricky, but you, you got to go stuff stuff around with the um with the bicep and stuff as well. But all good. So this is um so this is so I guess some of the changes that I've done in this uh a long a long long time ago, like I I didn't I I really I really like the idea of of like the copilot being like a well, one of one of the use cases I think is really important is just kind of having this active, this dynamic knowledge base. So where you could go and curate a whole lot of, um, you know, documents and a whole lot of information and say, well, this is the this is the the source of truth that we want everyone to, to kind of care about. And um, and they will be able to come into the chat and actually ask questions and and be serviced by that by that information that you've uh, kind of the the dojo is blessed. Um, and and that's why I kind of like the idea of the of the global memory in uh, in, in in like the the, uh, the, the whole Copilot chat um, yeah you know, application, but they, they didn't really seem to give you access to the global uh, the global memory stuff originally. It was it was all about this idea of uploading a document to the chat, and so and I guess that was all about well. I can have multiple chats, and I could upload a whole lot of documents to a, to a chat, and basically create like a so you could go. And, it's it's like a oh, maybe like a, a like a, a ghetto version of a of GPT <laughs> like it, it's like um 
Yeah, like with, with, sorry, the GPTs. So you you could basically just put up curate, throw a whole lot of um, whole lot of uh, yeah, documents in there, and then you could go and download and send that um, that chat to someone else, and they could they could do stuff with that. But yeah, I I think I think a way more um compelling use cases to just be able to have a this yeah this whole kind of this sort of source of truth and be able to go and search against that. So I I added this um, upload to to everyone. I think it's actually been I didn't actually do a pull request on it. I should have, but I think someone's actually now put it in. Um, but basically the the global memory it's just since since the the segmentation of the memory just uses a uh, it just uses uh, tags, so it'll be uh, there'll be like a, a chat ID against it. So that that's being one of the tags. But the the um, the global uh, memory that's um that's just has a a good of of or a good on empty or, or zero. So um, if you could figure out, well, it took me a little while to figure out how to kind of share the the file because I'm, I'm not really a React React programmer, I'm not really a programmer at all anymore. But but um. I was able to figure out how to go and share that between both both those uh, those buttons, but basically, yeah, it's oh, nice really showing you. But if, uh, like, um, if you upload that, it, it now because it's because it's being um sent against the the GUI dot empty, it it will now go and uh, put it into global. So this is where I guess this is where I kind of started thinking about this idea of the, about the the semi structured um data that i was talking about at the start and that was what if because if i was to go and pull some csv into uh, upload some csv or an excel spreadsheet into here well i could i could do it oh sorry i, I couldn't actually do it because the the curve memory would would block it um because it's it's not set as a um as an extension that's allowed but that you could get past that uh, pretty easily um but then once you went once you actually go went and imported it You'd now have, yeah, it, it would then go and split it up. It'd run through the kernel, uh, the kernel memory um, pipeline, which would you know, go and extract the text and split it up and embed it, and and send it through. But yeah, a PDF document with a whole lot of English words, or with, with any language word, uh, with, with a whole lot of words in it, has it makes some kind of semantic sense. Like it, it when you go and when you go and throw all that into into a um, because into, into a, a vector database and you go and search against it, yeah, it's um, yeah, the content itself um, you know, gives gives um, it gives context. Whereas a whole spreadsheet of numbers does not. Now, you, you, yes, you can get some context from the the you know, I guess the column headers and uh, maybe some you know, tags from the metadata like the the name of the document. But yeah, it, when you add, but it, even worse than that, when you when you actually go and search like because it's going to go chunk it right so you've now got to be really smart with your chunking right it's like it's like i don't want if i chunk something halfway through a table or um you know or do i need to overlap so i'm catching stuff from before and, and even worse if i wanted to actually go and uh if, if i want to do a talk to that excel document and say hey um give me a total of of a, of a column well, that's really, really hard to do when when you're when you're just getting chunks of of this massive document out. So, something that does it really well though is something like pandas uh, for like is data frames. So, and if you've played with uh, Langchain or or even uh, played with Autogen, yeah, Python's Python's pretty cool and and it can do some really amazing stuff with. Basically, just going generating code to to get to an answer. So, so I thought, oh, cool. I'll, I really, I really like to do that. I had played with Autogen, and I was, I had, I had these crazy setups where, um, you know, we're having these kind of persona based agents where, like, one agent was the data analyst, and then he'd pass to the engineer, and the engineer would pass to the uh, analysis reporting um, uh, a, a person, and it was. And it was fantastic. It was like doing doing some really cool stuff and like flying between agents, and I I felt like a wizard. But then um, then I went, oh, well, I much prefer to um, program in C sharp, and um, and yeah, there's no kind of there's no .NET stuff for for all that for for Watergen, and 
a whole lot of those um yeah a whole, whole lot of those frameworks so so then i i um there is a there is a um a, like a fork or a, a branch of um a branch of the chat copilot stuff which was it chat copilot or maybe semantic kernel um which is uh about using fabric to to go and um look at look at csvs in the in the uh, in the fork it, it doesn't actually um it doesn't actually kind of go to fabric really it, it basically just uses um pandas to go and load this this csv document and then you can just you go and ask anything you like about this this uh document within within reason and it um and it will go and it'll basically generate the 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 python code and execute it and and return you return you the answer so that's uh that's pretty cool. The the really really exciting thing is uh is when you kind of throw like matplotlib in the in the uh, in the mix and like matplotlib is is a graphing uh you know a, a graphing framework. So uh, it basically you can just ask it to to plot a, a graph, a bar graph, a pi a pi graph, and it will just go and generate the uh, the code to do so. Now putting it in like a back end service, it it doesn't. It doesn't kind of love that straight off the uh, off the bat because it it has this this idea of backends and and it needs to they need to be interactive if it needs to if it, if it needs to be able to draw even if you're just saving it to a file so then you can go and um, you know stream it back to the to the client so it works really really well in um in, in notebooks like uh, like Jupyter notebooks because it can just it can go and basically um, generate that that image straight away but um. I'm still playing with like how I can get it to, like, say, generate. So, you know, go and ask a query, go and ask a question, and then for it to go and return that, and also to return a graph in maybe to, uh, saving it as a file. So then I could um, then pull that down, but it's uh, it's a little tricky. So the so my my other environment where this does where this does work is. Um, if I upload an Excel uh, spreadsheet into here, um, it will it will come up here and it'll be marked differently. Uh, it'll be it'll be marked as a as like this little icon for semi structured and it means that it went and pulled in, it went and grabbed the um the schema. So I um I basically load that. I, I'm I'm actually using Langchain to do it because even though I love um you know semantic memory and uh, semantic kernel, the um the Langchain stuff. Especially with um, its different uh, providers and or loaders, it's there's, there's a whole lot of people have already done a whole lot of the work to um, to go and load pretty much anything you, you can think of. So yeah, you know, when you're talking about something like an Excel document, you know whether it's an XSL X, uh, XSL X or or just a sorry XL XLSX or an XLS. Um, so. Yeah, because one of them was binary and the other was was XML. Um, it it goes and takes care of all that for you. So, so hopefully we are, you know, I can, maybe I can write some stuff for the the kernel memory and and go and um and uh, pull it back into the uh, semantic memory so I can uh, get back to uh, being honourable to to SK. But but um the yeah, the link chain stuff it would it would go and load the Excel document and then you could just basically throw uh, throw pandas at it. And um, and go and ask uh, pretty much whatever you like, and then and also um, yeah, and and also do the uh, do, do the stuff with matplotlib, which of course uh, I haven't quite got working because of that that file issue. But so that's kind of all rocking in there. Um, I'll just show you really quick. Have, I've, I've gone over my twenty minutes. I probably I'm probably about forty minutes over on a do so. No, that's fine. I just just have a quick question. Um, on I think from someone uh, I think Mohammed just uh, posted a link to uh, kernel memory supported data format. Um, so just wondering whether you actually use the uh, uh, the fork that um, uses kernel memory or as opposed to the previous version of semantic. Oh no, it's all it's all kernel memory. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because well, that's the case. Well, I think it it might be it's it might have been supported um, using. You know Excel and Word and all that stuff, but yeah, I, I started this a long time ago. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. 
I'm going to check Core Pilot just so. I'm, I'm ne I've never felt so redundant. <laughs> no, no, all good. I think I, I think it's good to to highlight you know other you know data frames and you know implementation and so on um, uh, in there. So, uh, but good to to know that uh, I think Mohammed just mentioned around uh, supported data format. If you use the uh, the latest chat core pilot fork, um, that would have um, that format that's been that's been uh, supported. Right. Yeah. No, um, the the thing with um the thing with playing with uh, like yeah, you know, data frames and and Python is that you can you can also and like I guess this is probably um Lang chain specific as well is that you can kind of you can give it a schema and you can do kind of like like fuzzy searches on it and stuff and it's and it, um it, it's really it's really forgiving <laughs> when you when you have this like a crazy spreadsheet which like the columns column names are like xt underscore cost underscore nz or something like you can you can still ask it at a cost and it will yeah it, it tries its best to kind of come up with an answer but yeah i'll i'll um i can't believe i missed that i'll go i'll go play with that uh that, that uh, excel stuff we'll see uh, how it how it kind of holds up but the the other the other thing i guess some of the other changes the kind of so if I go and do a demo here, and what, so what documents have I got in this? So this is this is Gavin. This is um, it's just a play. This is a, a for me to just go and play around with. It's, I'm just loaded up with ISV team documents. So I hope there's not nothing too commercially sensitive in here. Um, and so if we go, there's a, yeah, a few documents in there. So um, read it. Uh, oh, that will work. What is the um, uh, uh, and I think in the in the original um, at the moment. So um, let's continue uh, the uh, presentation. Um, one thing that I wanted to to share, and this is one of the probably uh, frequently frequently asked uh, from the community um, is around you know how you build um, you know you've got you've got copilot uh, chat copilot reference application um, and you know how do you um, actually come up with a uh, kind of the right architectures or the right um, you know other other supplementing services or supported services in order for you to um, build uh, copilot using semantic kernel um, the the chat code part is great, so it's actually uh, giving you the the, the application um, sample. Um, but uh, as a, as an overall architecture, um, here's a is basically a sample of that um, of um, how you could leverage semantic kernel. In this case, using Azure. Um, you know, as you can see, there's um, you know the orchestration API that you um, there's basically two parts of this. Um, this is a you know starting from kind of the 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 front end. Uh, uh, users uh, where it accesses your copilot application, whatever that might be, um, and then it's uh, being um, uh, basically uh, filtered using API management for uh, management of your APIs, um, and uh, you expose the orchestration API um, in there, um, and you have um, you know just semantic kernel, you know the the planners and and so on within that, and then you also have plugins. Uh, within that orchestration API uh, that you could build as a as a function add, for example, right? And um, in this case, uh, you can use a number of uh, databases. Um, so you can you know you can uh, have different data sources. You can have uh, GoQuickly Search. Um, you can also have Cosmos DB um, as well uh, for the embeddings, and you can use PG Factor, for example, with Cosmos DB. Um, and also you have uh, Cognitive Search uh, for uh, document uh, memory. Uh, so, you, so you can actually uh, leverage different data sources that you can integrate to that orchestration API. Um, so it comes down to your requirements um, on that. And then uh, in this case, you've got a, a batch data pipeline uh, where you know it has a number of uh, number of services in here. Uh, it might be that uh, you're leveraging um, you know, um, Azure ML uh, that you have uh, kind of um, 
you know, for example, you have your own sort of LLM that you want you kind of build uh, or small um, LLM. Um, and you leverage the services um, and um, all of these um, data that, that's being uh, searched um, or being retrieved uh, are then being exposed to the orchestration API. Um, so that was um, uh, pretty much kind of the idea. Um, the, the batch data pipeline can be anything, as in like, you know, uh, it's just an example of, of that, uh, but you can have uh, a different um, thing or you can even use um, uh, straight away, like in this case, uh, you, using Azure OpenAI service um, that um, doesn't need um, all of these various uh, data processing or data pipeline. So yeah, so this this uh, is useful for you know um, internal sort of knowledge mining. So I think um, the other day we we had a demo from Jim um, on that. Uh, or you can integrate it with your internal systems, um, and making it um, overall architecture um, of your of your copilot, uh, build your own copilot uh, sort of environment. Cool. Any questions or thoughts on that? Uh, from from this diagram, um, does that sort of rhyme with you? Is that something that you thinking of doing uh, within your company? Yes, yeah, so I was just mentioned yeah, the container. Yeah, I think I was just going to comment on that, Desa. Like the, um, it's a bit tricky the the chat copilot. Uh, uh, App that that I've, been, that I've been playing with because I, I think I, I think if I was if I was to go in I, I would do whatever I had to do to make it easy for the for the team or make it uh, make it make, make it really transparent and easy to actually develop on because the, there's like yeah the chat copilot app yeah it's um yeah it's it's great but it's not with the the, the way that it's kind of built with the you know the React app and it's kind of stuffed inside the other one and it yeah it's 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 not kind of um it was like componentized and yeah you know, everyone wasn't running over each other like i'd hate to i'd hate to go and work on that with uh you know with like a team <laughs> it would be it'd be really interesting so i just think you i think you want to just focus on making it really uh really kind of pragmatic and easy for for everyone to kind of work on it whatever's simple for the for the team i reckon is the best way because look look how many lines are on, on this <laughs> it's like you want to make it uh, as easy for yeah. the, to maintain well, the question I'd have and I would consider is this orchestration API is the core of your product or platform. If that's not working or yeah. if that's doing the wrong thing or if it's not scaling, that's where things, are, you know, everything stops, right? And I would, I would say a lot of work needs to be done to work out A, how that's going to scale Mm. And B, because you're going to have a lot of plans that might take time to execute. So you may look at something like durable functions, or you may look at something that can orchestrate those longer running tasks where there's, you know, there's not actually a lot happening. You're waiting for the plan to come back. You you know, you don't want to end up in a situation where that's not doing what it's doing. So I think, if, although that's a, you know, orchestration API is just a nice little box, there's actually a lot of machinery that has to, work really well in there um so yeah that would be my call out and that's where i'm looking at where you know the things i'm building for myself is focusing on how do i make that really resilient how do i make that so that it you know one you know 100 blocking calls don't stop the whole application bring the whole application to a halt because you've got a whole bunch of long-running plans you know waiting for the gen waiting for the um model also the other thing that we need to think about is, yeah, there's going to be a model plugged in. There's going to be one, not just one model plugged into this. There could be many models. Um, how are you managing things like tokens um, coming out of this? There's also needs to be a little bit more of a mention on monitoring and logging and, and, and analytics for, for this so that you can actually diagnose problems. It's kind of mentioned in App Insights, but um, I think a little bit, yeah, that would be my thinking that would be I where I'd be looking at, at doing stuff with. Yeah, I think that would, yeah, nice. if you get stuff out of like prompt flow and stuff about your like this the performance of your like your prompts and and, and I think this I've seen some other great um repos where people are have put in like 
kind of cost analysis or cost tracking stuff like basically um yeah how many tokens something a question that the, uh, an agent is using and the app basically this is how much it just cost you to ask that question because that stuff's going to get really kind of important when you are yeah when you when you really start to scale up Thanks for that. Uh, it is it is a sample. It's probably uh, something that will will evolve. Um, however, we basically zoom out from all of the various implementation that will um, uh, that will change in in v1. Uh, this this beta eight now, um, which is very very close to um, uh, kind of the 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 release of v1. But you know, overall architecture should um, kind of be be the same overall if you want to leverage something like SK or any other frameworks uh, for that matter. Cool. Um, yeah, so with that, um, I'll move on to the Q&A um, and uh, we'll have a couple of this couple of questions or maybe a bit more. Um, so first one is around um, version one, um, you know, some of the examples that we have, you know, the kernel syntax examples and some of the notebooks um, as well. When uh, there's a uh, there's a question as to when those examples will be ported over to match the changes uh, coming in SK version one. Um, so there's uh, office hours, the last office hours actually um, uh, Matt um, mentioned that um, the aim uh, at least is to um, release it, um, you know, all the examples at least um, by the end uh, or by mid December. Uh, so all these examples will be updated. Um, there may be variations as to which examples, but uh, the kernel syntax examples would be uh, a priority uh, for them to make sure that um, it's updated. Um, in, in terms of documentation, um, that may come later, right? So that may come, I guess, as early as hopefully January uh, in terms of docs updates. You know, um, if you go to um, the learnmicrosoft.com where you see the, the official docs there. So some of those examples might be um, Updated it after the, the release, so that the, the team's focus is really um, uh, releasing that version one, including some of the examples uh, within the repo. The next one um, is around a uh, question around uh, Postgres implementation in semantic memory. Um, I actually don't know uh, that uh, whether there is any planned uh, for that. Uh, if anyone have any um hints or questions just feel free to is it, just is it mentioned in the uh, in their repo do they mention it on the roadmap um, Did, didn't it didn't it used to, didn't it it used might to be. be in there i'm sure uh, i'll just check now cool i'm sure i used to say postgres in the app config somewhere hmm. yeah that was check copilot kernel yeah, memory cool. yeah, kernel yeah, memory yeah, good, um, good, good might man. not support it let me just check up. Excellent. Um, yeah, so this one here, um, that's what while we're checking. The second question was around, um, you know, we have um, ability for you to um, separate um, uh, the roles within uh, when you pass in uh, your prom uh, to OpenAI or to Azure OpenAI. Um, using system, assistant, or user uh, versus just passing the whole prom as a user message, um, uh, for example. Uh, in addition, how this works when using SK functions on the fly, like kernel dot create semantic function prom and so on. How prompts are passed in here to the API. So I guess probably worth revisiting the you know uh the kind of the the why as to why the sk team kind of uh separated the roles um it was due to the chat completion apis where you couldn't leverage different messages or roles uh while using that uh while using the chat completion apis so with this uh kind of prom syntax um this uh, effectively will work across all modal types right um so Today, they they basically introduced that uh, you can use the the message tags, a message in an XML format, um, and then with it you'll be able to create prompts uh, like message role user, you know, and then message role system, um, and so on, um, and an assistant, 
Uh, so effectively, you can quickly and easily offer prompts with with uh, system messages as well as uh, the the user uh, at the bottom of that um, to make it to make it easier for you to control the behavior of the output from from LLM. Uh, so that's really what uh, the purpose of it. Um, but behind the scenes, my understanding is that it's uh, actually going to pass those tags into a chat history, right? Uh, so that will be uh, uh, that will be uh, made as a chat history within um, with, behind the scenes when you pass it on to, to Ellen. Cool. Um, if, if there's any thoughts on that, uh, happy to expand. Anyone want to expand on that? Cool. Um, next question is um, Azure Studio. Uh, this is related to a recent announcement from Ignite. Um, so Azure AI Studio and Semantic Kernel. What is the role or what is the Microsoft uh, Microsoft value prop? Uh, what's the difference between them and why we should use one or the other? Um, I guess they're not really replacing, right? Um, one or the other. Uh, they, they're more complementing uh, each other. So we released the Azure AI Studio, uh, which is um, pretty much repackaging a lot of the various tool set that we have or services that we have on uh, Promflow and um, Azure, and the, the AI Studio, um, OpenAI Studio, um, and then now baked into one uh, place. Um, and then um, there is a diagram, I think someone uh, posted um, as well, around the various co-pilot uh, experiences in the cloud. I'm not sure if anyone wants to... Um, get the, the URL for that. Um, but yeah, there's a really good um, URL that highlights the different corporate experiences and the, the personas um, of that. All right, uh, we're... Uh, quickly, oh, just, uh, just uh, Cole um, tells us here, Postgres not supported out of the box. Uh, there are some interfaces you can implement to support. So kernel memory doesn't support it. Yeah, there's a bit of a discussion from from uh, Devis on this and one of the issues that you can sort of look up <laughs> talking about this kind of thing. Awesome. Thanks for that. All right. Um, I'll leave. Uh, this is right at one o'clock, so I might just end it there. Um, unless anyone have any uh, questions they'd like to talk about. Last question. Thanks all. Cool. Apologies again for uh, disruptions earlier, but um, thanks for coming and uh, look forward to catching up again in two weeks. Welcome thanks, back, Glenn. <laughs>